I hope you're all doing well. I'm doing a 30 minute session for a client. This is actually an Abby and Joseph combo session. So I'm gonna be doing 30 minutes. Joe's gonna do 30 minutes of distance, psychic wisdom and energy healing on this client's goals, which are connecting with the spirit realm, sh sharing messages and doing some um, analysis of the energy balance. So I'm gonna read the goals here shortly. I just wanna thank you so much for the opportunity to connect with you. Thank you so much for sharing here on YouTube. And it's really fun to do these Joe and Abby sessions. So I'm excited to see what Joe's interpretation of your goals are. I'm gonna put a link in the description if you guys wanna check out Joe's session for this client. And if any of you are interested in booking a session with myself or me and Joe, you can do so by visiting my website at abbynormalswisdomquest.com. Okay, so I'm going to read your goals now. And you say, I feel at this point in time with all the energy work I've done over the past couple of years, I'm heading in a more balanced direction for my life. That is a really cool thing to be able to say, by the way. So all the energy work that you've done over the past couple of years, you actually feel like you're heading in a more balanced direction in life. So I'm interested in getting a message guided by spirit on whatever I need to hear about my energy at this time in my life to assist me going forward. Yeah. So just continue to empower this direction. Okay, I'm going to relax. This is going to be awesome. Okay. So what messages does spirit have to share with you? And you're on a balanced path doing this energy work and you're feeling more tuned into this balanced path and you want to know more about this direction and your energy balance and keep uh keep it up you know all right <laughs> this is a very weird first image there's a man and he's uh, in an electric chair and his eyes are kind of rolling back and crossed, okay? They're like cross-eyed, but rolling back in his head, and he's really tense, okay? And there's a lot of pain involved with, with this, but I can't hear any sounds. I feel like he is trying to say something to the universe. I see his mouth moving, but I can't hear what he's saying. There's also a lot of tension throughout his whole body. His muscles are really strained, like really tight. I feel like there's a connection between his body and then the spirit realm because there's something of this event, which is quite trying. It is challenging. It is, um, it is gripping. I mean, he's gripping this electric chair. Um, he's tense. He's um, speaking from his gut to try to get these words out, even though I can't hear anything. But there seemed to be uh, an energy beam that is coming, I don't know if it's down from above or from within here, uh, within him, and then up into the sky. But it's made out of a silvery light, and it's a connection between his body, his spirit, and something beyond this world. I'm waiting for this to calm down. I'm waiting for this to change. I'm waiting to understand why this image, what is this image saying and what's beneath the surface. And they tell me it's, it's not, it's not done yet. Like we need to give this just an, another moment or two. I can't force it to be complete if it is not yet complete. Because when this trying time is over, it's going to be a bit strange. And aspects of you are aware that this trying time is going to complete. The reason why it hasn't completed yet in this scene, because they don't know how to cope with what is after this trying time. They don't know if they want to just 
it, it's almost like um, give in to this electrocution and give in to the next life. Or if they want to recover from this and continue through this life. But they will not be the person that they recognized before. And so there is a decision going on beneath the surface as to what the choice is going to be. It's going to take a great deal of courage and a lot of strength to choose to recover and discover yourself in a new way. Because it's going to be so strange. It, it, and it's as strange as we're already moving through a revolving door as though that never happened. Because it seems so far away, so distant. And you're nothing like this original scene. It's almost like this original scene was something that happened 5,000 years ago. And now we're just... Uh, I mean, it's like I'm walking into a fancy bank. And this electric chair, by the way, I, I didn't describe all the detail of the scene. There was white sand. The electric chair was in the center of what is a circular space. And the actual walls of the space were open to the sky. The sky is cloudy, okay? And it seems like this um, lone event, supernatural even, and uh, the walls are um, like made out of stone, but there's something like ivory about them. There's something, I don't know, something pretty and um, unique about them. But they're a bit broken in the front, in the door that enters into the space, which seems to be, you know, there's these walls. This may be 10 feet high, maybe tall, it's maybe more like 20 feet high. He's sitting in this random chair, and it's like an electric chair, but I don't see any cables. But I see this profound event. It's a profound event between man and um, some sort of a spiritual, um, electrical uh, transformation taking place. Something mind-bending, world-bending, dimension-bending, and from an ancient time. That's what the energy is like. That's what it is expressing, okay? Now, this new revolving door, it's like that was 5,000 years ago. I don't even really recall it. I'm just It just is kind of a flash in my memory, but it feels so long ago. And now we're in this bank. I mean, people are dressed nice. There's paperwork. There's a big entryway. And it's, it's beautiful in here. It's upscale. It's high-end. It's fancy. It's actually peaceful. It's comforting. It's odd. I'm starting to see people are starting to become numbers on a calculator. And then I see a big hand is just punching people's digits. Like, let's see, this woman here is the number one, and this man randomly over there is number two. And, and I see this hand is just... Like, these people are just numbers on a calculator. They really have no purpose other than to become... Um, they, they don't realize that they are just numbers on a calculator. They don't represent actual lives. They re represent being a person. They represent living a lifetime, yes. But they don't realize that their life is, is basically just a number on a calculator. That's it. And somehow you're not entering into this dimension completely because you're not becoming a number on the calculator. And that means that you, you're fitting outside the box. You're not fitting in. The question is, is where is the real life force energy? I see there's so much more profound meaning in the event of this man in the electric chair. And it was difficult. It, 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 it forced physical, mental, emotional, spiritual strength. It, it, it was 
expressing of one's voice with one's gut in order to get these final words out to God and then underneath the surface a communication of who are we to become after this. We will not be anything familiar to ourself. We either enter into the next life or we we wake up from here and move forward. But what's odd is we wake up 5,000 years later walking into a bank where people are just numbers on a calculator and there's no... You're energetically walking amongst another dimension where people can see and, and experience you, but you're not part of that drawer. It's like they're just part of a junk drawer of someone else's miscellaneous things, but you're not part of that drawer. Yes, they live a life. Yes, they have their life experiences, but they're more formatted. They're more formulated into just being digits. So what are you going to do with yourself? I feel like the question of where the true heartbeat comes from. Where the true voice exists. And... You're not really doing anything. You're just standing here. There's a big fake plant and a little seating area. Some people are working over here at the bank and over there at the bank. It's a really big, beautiful place. This is the nicest bank I've ever seen. And you're just sort of standing at just, just in front of this revolving door and there's this just looking around and you kind of paused out. You need to know where to go next. And it, to me, it seems like you're calling yourself back to a familiar place that was extremely challenging, but bending between the will of the, the physical dimension and some spiritual dimension, and it's the power of this electricity. I mean, you just sort of stopped here on like this marble, um, it's just like these beautiful cut marble pieces make up the floor, and then you're just standing on one of them just in front of the revolving door just not not sure where you're going and I started to be told that no matter what the decision was 5,000 years ago you will still always wake up as a new person from every experience you will always be unfamiliar you could say and even now you are unfamiliar and it's like you're looking for something that is of familiarity in an unfamiliar pl place. Even you are unfamiliar to yourself. There's too much of the unfamiliar. Because it, it means there are no rules that you're used to working with. It's all unfamiliar. Something about the marble is trying to tell you it's trying to guide you, but you can't hear the sound of what is the floor. It seems kind of strange you'd even listen to the floor talking to you. But the marble in this bank is alive. So I come through the air from this dimension of the digits into this dimension where you stand. And I tell you to listen to the marble. It has a message for you. And it sounds very ridiculous. You're just like, I'm basically just a messenger from the air and you get this weird idea like, okay, I swear I just got this idea that I should listen to the marble because it has a message for me. <laughs> hmm, cuckoo. <laughs> but no, it's real. This really is happening. So you do. You're like, mm, it's much more fun to listen to marble than to <laughs> investigate this bank world boring. It just seems very, like, dusty, even though it's so polished. It's like, 
it's like an old, um, dusty, forgotten about, I don't know, archive with nothing really interesting in it. And even if you stumbled across it and thought, wow, cool, an old, forgotten space, it'd be like, mm, there's really nothing here but dust. That's what this bank is, like a, a polished, clean, for long forgotten archive of dust. Uh, but the marble still speaks. And your feet are on this marble. Hmm. You can't, you can't understand it. You can't figure it out. And I tell you, sometimes the messages don't come with words or language. Sometimes they come with a, a knowing. What is it that you feel the marble has told you that if you were to just say, I know what the marble said, what, what do you feel like it said? You know, from some silent place, just let it, let it say it. Marble is saying that this is what you're telling me. It's almost like my path is, I'm on my path. And if I'm on my path and I can't understand where I'm going next or who I'm to be and all this is unfamiliar, I am being guided. The marble is telling me that I am on my path and that being at the bank in this moment is on my path. That is why I'm at the bank. And it's almost like trusting in hidden, the hidden truth without feeling like you have access to full clarity. It, it feels like um, somebody put a blindfold on, on you and then you had to go from one airport to another airport to another airport, take a ra random train, take a bus, and you have no idea where, where you are and you're not allowed to take the blindfold off to tell. And so you're trying to determine from maybe temperature and out background sounds and time it took and <laughs> what feels like one direction or the other, but it just seems like you can't add any up any details. You can't make, you can't just simply know anything. And the blindfold is still on, but yet you have access to fewer details than even temperature and sound. And therefore you must work with a sense of just simply knowing. And the marble is telling you that you are on your path. And that seemed almost a, a stretch to even think to talk to the marble, to get the message to talk to the marble, and then to even interpret the marble's message was a stretch. And then it feels like, okay, I can work with this, I'm on my path, but it feels like a stretch because I, I don't feel like I'm getting any, um, like, it, it's not blossoming inside of me. I'm not having that aha a moment. Okay. I'm going to, I'm going to step out of your energy field here. Because I'm, I'm not going to look at this through the lens of how you're looking at this, interpreting it through you, but I'm just going to go to your spirit guides in your higher self. Because it's going to be hard for you to really understand where they're directing you at this time. And it feels like, you could say on a massive scale, there's a lot of... Um, everything is adding up on a massive scale, and there's a lot of massive scale adding up going on. And there's so many sectors of information that are adding up, tallying up, balancing out, and it's going to be hard to really know where you exist in the midst of all of this addition. <laughs> Calculation, I guess you could say. But you are a part of this. So again, it comes to trusting in each and every day and what you feel inspired to do with your time in that day. It's really getting you into the now experience more than the future and where you're going next. Just keep doing, you know, it's like keep living in the moment right now. Energetically, that's what it feels like. So if, if I were to take a look at your energy balance and see if we can learn some new things about you in the moment based on how your chakras look, let's just say.
And we're going to actually start from the top down. I go to your crown chakra. I'm going to, this is so crazy. Um, so we're actually going to turn you. So I'm going to do the top down from behind you. Okay. And that's a, they're like, uh, so I, I usually just start with the root, but they want me to start with the crown, not from the front, but from behind. And whatever is behind us is oftentimes things we've left in the past, um, things we're walking away from, we are moving forward. So it's it could be old baggage, it could be stuff you're dragging along with you that you didn't realize you haven't let go of. So so what's behind you is is often associated with that. Okay, energetically, it's it's like that. Okay. Um. Your crown chakra, it's, it's odd. It represents, there's two eyes that see, but there's only one eye. And, and it's even weirder than that. Because the one eye that can see is the crown chakra, but it seems to be coated in material. And it makes me think of teeth that haven't been brushed. They get like a strange, like you can scratch it. It's just like buildup. So we can't see out of the one eye, and the one eye we can, which is a crown, has got a film on it. And I see the crown gets very sensitive when I actually take a toothbrush and toothpaste and start brushing the crown like it's a tooth. <laughs> and I do this and it gets really like, it's like a kid that doesn't want to get a shower or something. <laughs> no, you're getting, you're gonna get in the shower. <laughs> it's, it's like fighting back. It doesn't want this. And I say this is good for you. Again, like a child, like this is good for you. You will enjoy being in the shower. Trust me. You're going to be so glad you got clean. Like it's just, it takes so much time and so much effort to do a freaking shower. It's like so much of their life dedicated to this 15 minute experience. <laughs> That's what your crown is acting like. Like, why are you so impatient? Why are you so resistant of doing this, this cleansing thing? So I stop time. Oh, because it, there's actually some buildup in here that doesn't want to be cleaned away. Doesn't want to be removed. Because what clings to the teeth is alive and it doesn't want to, it doesn't want his life extinguished. The dirt that's built up physically and energetically doesn't want to be removed. <laughs> it, this is, it's calling this body home. <laughs> no, you got to get out of here. You're not part of this home. That's why it's so important to keep things clean and take the time to do it. And we get busy and we get focused on other things that need to be done and we let other things just kind of sit on the sidelines, which is okay. It's just being human. We've got to juggle our time. I am to bring in light and sound. And I'm playing a symphony in here of, of music and there's a lot of bass. There's a lot of um, chords, like on a piano, like several, I'm talking like 10 notes at the same time. And then they switch, they shift into a totally different set of 10 notes at the same time. It's just like a lot. And it comes from the depths and it goes upward in your crown chakra area that's been opened up and we need to clean all this off with light and sound. This is also connected to the bank energy, the message from the marble, your higher self spirit guides, and also this 5,000 years ago electric chair thing. All this stuff is interconnected, okay? It's almost like you're catching up with yourself in time. And part of the, the numbers and the tallying that's going on across the globe and maybe an experience of not really knowing where you're going in life at this time, um, is actually you're catching up with a very grand scale of time of your own soul path and own soul experiences. It's not just about present day. It's about thousands of years of time and soul movement and soul experiences and exchanges. Like it's all um, getting tallied up individually and collectively 
because there has to be a grand um, sort of turning of the master clock into what our, our new experiences are going to be here on earth. It's like a great revolution is taking place, like um, Pluto it finally made its round around the sun or something crazy like this. It's like as a human race, we are making our round full circle. And maybe it's a 10,000 year time span, maybe it's 100,000, maybe, maybe we can't even deduce it with time because it, that would be our human nature to do that. But it seems like a lot grander scale of, of translation and calculation is happening. When I say that in your crown, your crown instantly um, puffs out some white powder and it puffs it out like delicately like um, little um, dandelion seeds blowing on the wind just like puff out. It's like a puff of dust in a way, but it's, it's silkier. And I blow it off like we are in the archive of dust. And I start to see other things that are growing up and out of the crown, and I actually pull them out like an old weed. And it comes from the root, and then I pull it out the top, actually. And the whole thing just pulls straight out, surprisingly easy. And what's interesting as well about your crown, it has all these kind of grooves in it, and um, I've blown that dust out, that's silky, and it's, it's somehow I'm, I am, it's like a singing bowl, but I'm using it like my fingers around, and it's creating kind of a, a moisture, a liquid, and it's creating like a singing bowl sound in your crown chakra. I don't hear like the chords being played or the bass of sounds coming up and out. I actually just hear like singing bowl sound here happening in your crown and it's smooth and it's refreshed from the inside out. And it feels quite nice. I'm going to ask your higher self and guides, where, where would you like me to go next? And we're going to go to your third eye here. And it's, it's actually quite um, a dark purple color. And it seems backwards and forward. It feels confusing. And I remind it that we are on the back side, looking from the back side forward. And it gets aggressive because it, it, it wants to be familiar. It wants things to just happen in a normal way. I'm supposed to just look at the front of your third eye. I'm not supposed to go in from behind. I'm not supposed to start at the crown. I'm not supposed to, it's almost like, um, but, I'm at, but we're following our intuition here. We're following guidance from um, beyond our own mind. And that guidance is, uh, is powerful. Even if we have to do it differently and go against the grains and it's annoying, that's actually better. It's healthier. We, we're following some sense of intuition here. We're shaking things up and it's good. Third eye doesn't like that. It wants things to be in order. It wants things to be calcul calculable. Like I, I understand the, the meaning of this. I'm actually opening up the back of your third eye and pulling a big gooey jam out. It's like I, I just burst a, a blueberry made out of um, like purple paint because I see started to see blueberry color in here, but it's like juice everywhere. And this thing is screaming and saying no, no, and it's part of what what holds us into a place of. It's like we're stuck on a teeter totter that doesn't go up or down. It's just like it doesn't move. It's just suspended in time, and we can't tell where we're at on our path. We can't tell um, our way forward. Um, we even have associations with other timelines that are calling us, but we don't know what to do with that information, how we're translating into our present day. That's why we're being guided. We're being helped because we're, we're not meant to just know everything. Part of it is we just experience the day-to-day -day life. And in experiencing it, we are, we are moving through dimensional doorways without even trying.
All right, already your third eye feels more breathable. But I'm also going to bring in some sounds here as well because it's, it's really in resistance. I'm creating the effect of this is actually, um, this is going to be, it, it's basically a big spinning wheel. And part of it, part of the spinning wheel is going like counterclockwise and part of it's going clockwise simultaneously there in motion. And somehow this also creates a sound that is pushing out what is, um, what you don't need anymore vibrationally. And it's creating a balance, a sense of balance and balance in time even. And it also sends energy down and makes you feel more grounded, more connected to your body and the planet. Okay, so let's take a look at your throat. It's kind of dry on the back side. It's just kind of, it seems like it's dried out and there's um, pipes in here that I'm not sure what they're used, what, uh, what they're used for. It seems confusing in here. I'm pulling out like a little bag and it's just pure black. When I pull it out, I start to see there's more light shining from the center. And the light is full of moisture. And I see the light is like hands helping. And the hands are touching the dry pipes in the back. And this light's from the center and I, I see it's reaching the back now. And it's reaching out the back. And it's reaching the sides and it's reaching forward. It's reaching above and it's reaching below. And it's a very feminine energy in here. And she represents kindness. And the light of kindness is shining from within your throat. And it's gentle and it's sweet. It's just caring, you know? It's pure care caring. You don't really need these pipes. It's just pure light, a space of pure light and, and kindness in your throat. But I do create sound in here too. I started to see the wild, wild west, actually. I see men on horses, and I see a great open space that's pretty dried out. And we're waiting for it to rain. In a way, we're kind of glad it's not raining because we're on horses. We don't want to have to ride through all of this in the rain. It just seems easier when it's not raining. But I see that sometimes it's not up to the horsemen. And sometimes it's up to nature, what nature needs comes before what the man needs. And nature needs some moisture. So the men then will endure moisture if that's what nature says. So nature comes first, men come second. It's just a concept of, um, this makes sense to me. It's like um, our mind decides a lot of things. Like I would prefer this over that, so I'm gonna choose what I prefer. You know, so it's like, okay, sorry, um, nature, you can take a, the, you can step aside here because I'm going to do what I want. <laughs> and if you get in the way of what I want, I'm going to be very disappointed and you're not going to get in the way of what I want. <laughs> it's not being realistic. So nature comes first. And then I see the men on the horse have, start to nod and they say, yes, nature does come first. That means the caring of the horses, the caring of the earth landscape, the caring of their bodies, the caring of their... Um, it, it's like there's so many layers to, to a day. No, but we just live in our mind or we live in our, our place of perception. And somehow this is seen as coming from your throat. It's interesting. But when the men nod and they say, yes, it's okay for it to rain... And it's okay if we get wet and we have to ride these horses in the rain. It's okay. And it, when they say it's okay, they get out of the way of, of things needing to, to go their way or be their way for them to be happy. It doesn't have to go their way for them to be happy. Because the happiness comes from within. And it starts to rain now. 
I'm going into your heart chakra. This is like a creepy old grandma in a rocking chair. Uh, I see a baby in her arms looking out the window at a sunny day, but she's, I feel like she died still holding this baby. That the rocking chair still rocks and it makes a creaky noise. And it's very kind of a creepy scene. And the baby reaches its hand out for the sunshine. But nobody comes in to take this baby or lay this old woman to rest or anything. And I see time is sort of standing still in this space. And then as I stand here and I acknowledge this space, I'm, um, there's something of black butterflies being revealed. And the black butterflies make up everything in this room except for the baby. And the black butterflies become kind of like a consciousness and they become a spirit. And I feel that it's time for the spirit to move on. Because it died a long time ago, time to let the baby go. And then I carry the baby spirit into the sun. And these black butterflies um, go their own path, which is into the darkness. And it feels quite peaceful, believe it or not. It feels like the butterflies held on for as long as they could, as long as they thought was necessary until someone would come. And they weren't black butterflies because they were evil, it just happened to be black butterflies. But they were helping this baby spirit. And now it's time for the baby spirit to go into the light, into the sunlight. And that feels a lot ba more balanced in your heart. Again, the, the dry energy is starting to change into moisture and rainbows. So let's just take a quick look here at your emotional gut. Your solar plexus. Very tight. There's lots of threads that are very close together. I just placed my hand here and I create vibration to loosen things up. I create oxygen and breath. I create the sound of moisture and I bring in the sound of the singing bulls. So I'm just going to keep my hand here and then let me go to your sacral chakra and your root. <laughs> sacral chakra is just made out of dirt. It's just like slabs uh, that could make amazing walls, but they're like perfectly compacted slabs of compact dirt. And they're kind of a brownish red color. I feel like this also, it's time for, for circulation, almost like the big discs from the third eye, like um, time. And it's like um, going counterclockwise one and then the other is going clockwise. And somehow that's generating like a fan of energy and it's creating movement and creating vibration and it's creating time. It is time. And let me look at your root, okay? <sighs> huh. I'm looking down a well. And there's kind of a distortion between what is um a what is forward or what is like looking down? <laughs> I'm looking straight ahead or I'm looking down into. There's a lot of um, silent energy and it's time to create sound in here. And so I'm taking part of the spirit of the throat chakra and all the sunlight and the kindness and the wild west men that accept the rainy day and um, see the beauty of nature first. 
And so we're bringing those sounds here into the root chakra as well. That's very revitalizing. It's very refreshing. I start to see fresh foods, especially avocado. I see avocado. I taste avocado. It tastes really good. And I'm putting that taste in here in your root chakra. And so I'm letting, letting all this light and all this energy and all this information flow up and down and circulate around just to continue this, this path that you're on, continue to amplify um, the sound of balance for you. Activate you from the inside out. Anything else your spirit guides and higher soul would like to say? Allow, it's almost like allow time to circulate um, and keep, you know, it's like keep living in, in each and every day. And that you are, you are guided. It, maybe it seems like the revolving door is guiding you into a, a dusty old archive bank or something. Um, or it is it's guiding you to a difficult experience that bends time and space, spirit and physical, you know. Um, there's something more alive about that but there's a, a translation there's a calculation going on on here across time and that you're being guided through um, each and every day so if anything feels a bit unspoken inside yourself um, you are walking the path just fine so that's what i meant to share Thank you so much for this experience. Thank you guys for watching. Again, if you're interested in exploring a session with me, or with Joseph and I, you can book a session at my website at abbynormalswisdomquest.com. All right, have a great day, everyone.